this web tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and discuss just a few things that you're going to see in the Excel Module 1 projects. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the auto fit. So I'm going to go ahead and select column A. As you can tell, some of the content in these cells cannot be fully displayed because of the cell size. So I've selected A. I'm going to go over here on the Home tab to the Cells Format group. And I'm going to go to Auto Fit Column Width. And notice what happens here. That cell uh, gets bigger and it displays all of the content in those cells. I'm going to show you another way to do this and um, it'll make your life a lot easier. Is if you have multiple columns, that, and this also works for rows, that you need to uh, auto fit, you can select multiple ones. And you could have done this with the other stuff that I did. But instead of doing all that, you can just double click in between the columns. So right now you see the cursors change to align with two arrows. If I cl double click in that area, notice that it did all of those cells. It auto fit all of them. So it's an easy way. I'll do it one more time. Just double click and notice that pops out. That's an easy way to quickly do that. Another thing that you're going to be asked to do is to merge, center and merge cells. So I'm going to select A1 to E5. And on the Home tab in the Alignment group, I'm going to go ahead and click Merge and Center. This now all becomes one cell. And uh, unlike this, notice that the green box around the cell is larger here than if I click here. So it treats it as one cell. I can type in um, anything, and it will populate there. That's one cell now. In this, um, it automatically puts this cell based upon our setting. But you have the left, center, right, just like you do in, in Word and PowerPoint. Um, you have your font settings. You can change it, make it bold, underline it. Um, you can change the font here. You have the sizes. You can change the fill color. Um, you got the font colors. All of that's all up here. Um, and then another thing that you have is the styles over here. You might be asked to put in a heading for or a title. And it will make these changes. The total is popular with, uh, when you're adding numbers. But know that the, the cell styles are, are over here if, you need to, if you're asked to put a heading in or something like that. Another thing you might be asked to do is to clear the contents. Now, for just clearing contents, you can actually just select one or multiple cells um, and just hit the delete key and it will disappear. But what they're trying to get you to do is on the home group, um, click the clear drop down and then again clear contents because that's different from formatting and clear all so um, just clear contents you might be asked on this project to uh, change the tab color down here to a uh, from just the standard gray to a different color so if you right click on the tab and you click tab color you have a bunch of options here we'll just go ahead and select green and notice that it it's green here now I'm going to go ahead and select all of these numbers, and it's going to ask you to do some type of number formatting. I can guarantee you that. For this, I'm going to go ahead and select the accounting. Now, the cool thing about Excel is right here in this numbers group, they give you a bunch of options. You have the, the accounting, you have the percent, and you have the comma style. You can easily click one of them, and notice it puts it into accounting style. It even gives you two decimal places. I can also change my decimal places here, so if I wanted more, I could click that. Or if I wanted less, I could also click that to make them disappear. Now, I showed you how to do it that way. In this project, that's not really how they're wanting you to do it. They actually want you to go into the Numbers dialog box. Go to Accounting. You, you can do the two decimal places. Make sure you have a dollar sign there. Um, that's kind of how they're wanting. But either way is correct. Let's go ahead and look at the sum formula. So... There are a number of ways to work with formulas. Um, the best way for the projects that you're working on and Gmetrics and the certification test is to use this FX button up here, insert function. You can click that, or if you want to go to formulas, you could do that here. You can dig through them here. Um, I would encourage you to do that, but we'll go ahead and click this first. And in this box right here, we can actually search functions, and it tells us that we need the sum function. Um, so we'll go ahead and click sum. And then in this section right here, it'll pull up all the sum-like formulas. I'm going to double-click the sum, and it's going to ask me for my range. So I can type in the range here, B4 to B8, um, if I wanted to. But one of the cool things about 
excels, I can actually have this selected and actually just select my range. And notice that it populates that same information here just by clicking and, and dragging. And you get a green dotted line box around what you've selected. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Notice that it populates that total here. That's a very easy way to do it. Another way you can do it is um, you can do on the home tab and the editing group, you have these auto features. You have some average count numbers, min, max. Um, you could just click some and then uh, it does the same thing. You can click OK. You can, or click enter, you can type in here if you didn't want C8, you could type in C7 instead. And then finally, um, you could hand key in a formula. I do not encourage you to do this um, just because you're inexperienced on more complicated formulas such as the if or concatenate. You might accidentally not type in a quotation mark and it's going to mess up your entire formula. You're going to get frustrated. So, but you start off any formula with the equal sign. You're going to type in sum and then you open your parentheses. Now, again, you can type here. I'm just going to click and drag. Make sure that you close your parentheses out. If you don't, um, it will not register. And then you're good there. Now, with your formula, you're going to be asked to key in multiple formulas, but one of the things it's going to ask you to do is a drag fill or a series fill. So if I select this cell right here, this is where we have our original formula. If you look carefully, you see this green little box here in the bottom right-hand corner of this cell. And what I have the option to do is actually click and drag this over. Now, what it does is it actually uh, copies the formula over to each cell. And because it's a relative reference, um, it just changes. Up here, we have B4, B8, C4, C8. And what it does is it changes uh, the information in the formula to match where you're dragging it to. So D4, D8, and then, of course, E4, E8. It also works with things like months and days. So if I type in January and February, and we'll do March, the rule of thumb is you need three or more. And I did not capitalize this J. The rule of thumb is you need three or more. You need to select those cells. And once you do that, you can click and drag that over. And notice it populates the months over. And that's the drag fill. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, hey, why are there all those um, hash marks? And it's, and it's just simply telling you that in that cell there is a number or some information, but there's not enough space to actually display that. So if you see that on your project, don't panic. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. Just uh, make the cell fit. I double-clicked. You could click and drag it over, but it just needs more room to display the content. Let's talk about um, inserting a chart. Now we have one here, but if I wanted to uh, create a chart, I need to select some information. And right now I have these headings over here, but I also want to select the, the 2015, and you might be asked to do this. So I've selected those names. If I hold the control key now that I've selected those, I can actually go ahead and select these cells as well. Um, from here, we're going to go to insert, and we're going to go ahead and we'll do another chart. That's a pie chart. You have a lot of options. We'll delete this one out just so it's not there anymore. Now, some of the things you're going to be asked to do is uh, change the chart style. And if you're not sure, you can hover. If it says style 7, okay, that's the one we want. Um, we might be asked to change the colors, the quick layout. You can add chart elements from here. You can also add chart elements from here. And this is your title up here. And you might be asked to, to change the chart title. We'll just put in downtown. And we'll populate that. And then you might be asked to move this to another sheet. So if you have this click, there's two ways to do it. And in Excel, there's many ways to do a lot of things. So while I'm showing you, you might find a, a different way. Like I could right click to do this, but I'm going to click it, this button up here, which is the move chart. Now notice because I have a chart selected, um, I have special tabs at the top. Again, anytime you have a chart, picture, shape, table, all of those cool things that Word does, you get special tabs at the top. And so we're on the Chart Tools Design tab. We're going to click Move the Chart. Now on here, you want to make sure that you select New Sheet and call it whatever they tell you to do it. Downtown for this. 
um, and then click OK. And notice that it populates this information on, on a brand new sheet all by itself. And we have uh, nothing else. And we come back to the sheet. Notice that that chart is gone now.